All right, everybody, welcome to the uh, welcome to the live show. Uh, we have a super special guest today. I've been telling you about the Nashville Flippers and their meetup. Well, uh, uh, Steve, you're just you're just regular guest. You're, you're super oh, special. You're super I'm special. Super if uh, if we were if we were like at the Special Olympics, you'd be like top oh, of the top of the heat. That's high praise, uh, Steve. High praise. <laughs> I, but, uh, my son, by the way, is a Special Olympian. So. Uh, Ray is going to tell us all about the Nashville uh, Nashville meetup. Uh, he is half of the Nashville Flippers. How come you get all the microphone time? And I think I'm just a little more. Um, Dustin's like super camera shy. The whole thing, the whole premise was when we started this, is just kind of like bring Dustin along and just have him come out of his shell a little more. And if you meet Dustin in person, he's like a completely different person than he is on camera. Like he's, I'm more introverted on in person and he's more extroverted in person. Why is that? I'm more, I'm way more introverted in person, but I can talk to this camera all day. I don't get it. it it's so weird. I think maybe because we have control. I don't know if that's the thing and just we're taking the reins or, because if I'm in a group of people, I can only be like, I'll You'll see. If we're together, I'll just kind of like, all right, I'm d I'm good. I'll see you guys later, and go back and recharge. Yeah, I'll be in the corner somewhere. Uh, I'll, I'll talk if I if I know people or I'm like on the like I've never met Lag. He he could hit me with a sledgehammer. I wouldn't know him, but I would feel comfortable talking to him all day just because yeah. you know, right? But if it's if it's a complete stranger, if they talk to me first, I'm good. But I'm never gonna be the one that says, comes up and talks to. Us. I don't know why. He says, no, I think saying. that Ray is lag. I'm not lag. No. <laughs> I hope you're not. So, Oh, is it got a hot voice? Is it too hot? Is it too loud? Do I need to turn it down? I don't think so. No, okay. you're fine. All right. But, um, yeah, I mean, if you see me in person, like at the meetup, and I don't talk to you, it's not because I hate you. It's just because I got to get it together. You know what I mean? So... I got to make sure to like come out and Oops. greet everybody. And that's kind of, that's a little bit harder for me than, than it should be. Well, kudos to you then for throwing an event like this. Cause wow. somebody, I, know, right? I mean, I, cause I, I fully understand you, man. I can't, I can't do it. I've thought about throwing one in Cleveland, the Cleveland area. Cause you know, it's pretty decent thrifting there, but, and, and, and yard sales and things like that. But yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> But I, well, can, I, know, mean, I keep trying to get somebody else to do it, but nobody wants to do it. Yeah. I just wanted, you know, because I've lived here all my life, and, you know, we've used to have one here. And, you know, Philip Philip Lewis is the one that used to throw it. And I said, right. you know what? I don't know if that's going on anymore or what the deal is. And I said, I'm just going to attempt to do it. And I'm doing it the most inexpensive and most janky way possible by you just can't. everything being you free and just – telling everybody to just come he gets the right way you can't trust bill lewis he's a he's a sketchy kind of dude <laughs> he'll be there yeah. for sure oh yeah uh, phil's outstanding he uh, yeah. he's an awesome dude phil and myrna are just they're they're just they're just great people i uh, enjoy yeah. meeting. every time i see them i uh, just have a great time they're they're uh just generally nice folks uh so i'm, I'm looking forward to i mean you don't meet very many bad people at these things. You know, most most everybody is very – I've been to eight or ten of these things, and everybody is, you know, very nice, very, you know, very giving. Very, I mean, it is it is, a, it is a cool thing to meet a lot of people that, that get it, that understand reselling, because most time you spend your entire life with people. Even my wife looks at me. She wants to know if I found something good, but other than that, she don't care. Yeah, right. But, you know, it's what's funny because – Did we sell a lot today? Okay. Right. Like my all my, you know, Dustin, my brother-in-law, and then my other brother-in-law, we all kind of do it together, you know, and it's cool, you know, pitching ideas and, hey, what you find at Goodwill today or what didn't you find? And wherever, whenever we're together as a family and we're sitting at the dinner table, our wives are like, can we please <laughs> not talk about reselling today? <laughs> like, I don't care about the $10 plush that you found at Goodwill that's like vintage Build-A-Bear please let's not talk let's not talk reselling kevin it so. is april 26th to the 28th it'll start the evening that friday evening i think the first thing is dinner and then stuff all uh so we'll get ready to tell you about the events but all day friday all day saturday all day sunday the nice thing about it is he's gonna tell you the things that he's got planned but they're all 
I'm going to kind of come and go. Um, yeah. I'm not the biggest bins person. Maybe I'll go film the bins, but uh, are you, are you doing the old bins or the new bins? The crazy one, the one that I got an email from the bins saying that I had to take my video down. The bins. Is that is that the is that the one that's right the, by the flea market? Uh, yes. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna I do. I don't like uh, that place. I'm going yeah. to. I, I'll be so I'm gonna do yard sales first while y'all are doing flea market. And then when y'all do bins, I'm gonna run to the flea market. So yeah, that's the crazy. It's the one that it's connected. There's actually a Goodwill store connected right. to Goodwill. that Goodwill bin. Yeah, the one in Berry Hill. But um, yeah, and that's something that I really wanted to do is that it's a very like a la carte event. Here are the things that I'll be at the, the suggested suggested events. If you want to come to those, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine, too. I want it to be like a like a vacation for resellers and still do like reselling things. I'm looking forward to uh you picked out some wonderful restaurants, man. Uh, yeah, those uh, are my favorite. Yeah, we we every time we go to it seems like every time we go up there we eat at Martin's, uh, one of the Martin somewhere. Yeah. Uh, what is it? What is it? The wife likes the what is it? The hoe cake taco or something? Oh yeah, the yeah, hoe cake the, that's, taco. That's what she gets. Uh, <laughs> I think every time. Um, so there is a better, in my opinion, the best barbecue place in nashville is in gallatin tennessee it's a place called top hog cash only the their their hoe cakes are amazing it's like in the hood you know what i mean it's like the best barbecue place ever Uh, uh, that's my uh, hope a hoe cake up here in Ohio is a whole different. <laughs> oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah, it's not, there's no yeah, I'm, I'm a hoe cake. <laughs> yeah, no. But it's so it's uh, it's also what uh, Hattie B's is that that's Saturday too. That's Friday. Friday. Oh, that's uh, Friday night with Hattie B's. Okay. Yeah, Friday night, and then um, Saturday for lunch we're gonna go to Monell's. Have you ever been there, Scott? Monell's. Never been. To, never been to Monell's. So it's a family style restaurant. You just the the menu is set. You sit with a bunch of strangers in a huge table, right? And they just bring you about. They just bring you food out, and then if it runs out, you say, "Hey, I'm I'm out of fried chicken." They just bring more to you. It's amazing. Skillet fried chicken. It's my favorite fried chicken that I've ever had. Uh, I'm gonna so, have to leave. The, I'm gonna have to leave the shows because I'm not going, and you guys are making me. I know. So Tom right? wants to know what's a host cake. <laughs> so it's it's like it's 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 like cornbread. But um, like a pancake. But like a pancake cornbread that they yeah. that they they put taco fillings in instead of a soft taco. Um I tell you what an Ohio hoe cake is, but it's not appropriate. So it's like, it's this like is flex- a kids' show, Steve. Yeah. It's like flexible yeah. cornbread so that yeah. that you can eat your barbecue you can eat your barbecue with all the toppings and and everything in one bite without having to um <laughs> lag says endless fried chicken that's a thing oh it's a thing and that just not Ooh. not just yeah. that macaroni i mean uh, any anything that you want that it's a it's a different menu and they start off with the dessert so when you sit down on the table the dessert's already on the on the table oh wow that's, so we're, and then uh sunday uh you invite everyone to your church uh, yeah for, so for i go to a church called legacy nashville it's in east nashville um, I've been going there since 2017. I absolutely love it. And I feel like it's a good opportunity to invite people to church. Or maybe you haven't been to church in a while and you want to go with a group of people that you trust. I think that would be a great, a great opportunity for everyone to go 10 o'clock. And then, and then the Sunday, Sunday lunch, and then everybody heads back. Yeah. If you want, you can still stay. I know that uh, a couple of people are planning to coming earlier. A couple, some people are planning on staying later. So whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, I'm only 90 miles away, so <laughs> we haven't decided when we're coming. Yeah. We'll probably get there. I think you can check in the hotel at three o'clock, which is in Goodlettsville. The Holiday Inn Express is is mm-hmm. where most people are staying. If that fills up, the we did a- Phil, I, Phil did the one in Nashville at the Wingate, which is almost across the street. I mean, you can see it from the other hotel. So if you had to, that's a good choice. They're all, yeah, they're all there. I know Pat D's is staying at the La Quinta, so he said it was a half the price but uh i have a rule if my front door in my hotel room is leading to the outside i'm not gonna stay there 
Okay, so uh, I, 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 I used to think that way, but um, you know, I, I traveled this country sourcing stuff, and you would take stuff in and out of your car. You don't know, uh, how, easy it is. Okay. You don't know how easy it is to back your van up to right I didn't think about door that, Scott. And, yeah, and, and truck everything in and then lock it. I mean, so I used to think that way, but <clears> the problem <throat> is, is can you get a, a decent one? You know, the be- there's a lot of old Best Westerns there's that are like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, for the most part, I I, I agree. I, I don't I want the I don't want the door to the outside, but I have stayed in them and done really well because. Yeah, but there's you know, there's other hotels where the doors are on the inside and they're not anymore desirable. <laughs> I invite you. <laughs> Oh, to stay at the, uh, what is it? The uh, Super 8 in Columbus by the bins there. Try that I've one. Never, <laughs> I've never stayed <laughs> that in That is a spot. bad, bad, bad place to stay. Most Super 8s are not decent. But that one, yeah. holy Lord. So Tennessee Picker, Kevin, uh, it's April 26, 28. I expect you to be there, boy. Yeah, man. Come uh, on. If you've never met Kevin, Kevin's, man, he's a super nice. He's a super guy. And, uh, Kevin, is, Kevin is my favorite. This is kind of, I know that, um, um one of the reasons really when i'm doing this everything that i do is kind of like selfish wise for my own benefit like we have a podcast that i invite guests over and we talk about their reselling business and that's really for me to learn from them and then this is kind of like the same thing i want to be able to learn from each and every one of you guys here that are coming to the meetup i want to pick your brain ask you how you run your reselling business and that's kind of like my way to get everybody together in one room and just kind of like pick so everyone's I, brain. I don't think that's selfish. So, um, so I don't know how much you follow us, but I'm reading with the group. I'm reading a book a month. So this month, the book oh. is uh, rich dad, poor dad. And oh, so we'll do okay. that next month. We'll do rich dad, poor dad Monday night. Um, just come on Monday night. I just finished it yesterday as I was driving around the country um, somewhere in middle Georgia. I finished it. And the, one of his things at the end, he's he's talking about you can't, you know, it's 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 biblical. You see, you see it all throughout history. People talk about, you know, if you want to re- give to receive, give to receive, and he, he says, you know, if I want, uh, and I think that's the law of philosophy that I've done this live show for so long is, is you put it out there, you you give out information, you can't imagine what comes back to you. It it is, it is amazing the the people you meet, the knowledge you gain, and just by mm-hmm. just by hosting the show. It's, 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 you know, I, I'm sure that we, we've helped a couple of people, maybe one or two people here or there, but, uh, it's, I, uh, just, it, it returns. Just so put, I just put the link, uh, for the Facebook group in the yeah, chat. Whatever. Some people were asking where they find yes, inter- thank you so itineraries much, and things like that. So that's the link to the Facebook group there. Scott, what, um, what book are you guys reading after you do the review for rich dad, poor, poor dad? It's on my website. I'll make a look. Cause I would love to get, uh, jump into that because I, I'm not a big Scott. book reader. And one of my goals this year is to read a read books and I haven't been doing a very good job doing that. Uh, so the next if I have is, some sort of accountability, that would be it, fantastic. This one is supposed to be a little higher level thinking. So, uh, we'll switch gears a little bit. It's blue ocean strategy by can Chan, Chan Kim. Hmm. And then the book after that is I really looking for, I almost started that one today. Uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear. I really want to. I've done, I've read most of that one. So I'm, I, probably, I'm not a book reader either, but I yeah. can, you know, I spend a lot of time in the car and out here. And so uh-huh. I signed up for audible and I'm, I'm trying to get uh-huh. three books. I'm, I'm challenging myself three books a month. And, so you're and listening you, to the books. Yeah. So how do you, how do you really engage that part of my brain? I, I really want to be better yeah. in business. I want to learn different things. And I have so much time. I, you know, what have I been doing? I've got a TV over there. Uh, I was shipping the other day and I'm like, I just spent four hours watching burn notice. I've already watched all these. I could have listened burn to notice. Yeah. That's, that's, one, that's one of my favorite TV shows. Burn notice. Um, I'm like, I just I, watch old wrestling pay-per-views and just throw them on there. I'm like, I could have listened to a book and got, got so much out of it. You know, it's, yeah. it's really, really keeps your mind, especially driving. I have, I have learned. I should have taken have, more advantage of, of, of the time I've been in the car. I have a crap load of time in the car, but yeah, uh, I find that if I actually read the book, I retain more, you know, so Laura says more. she is reading blue ocean strategy now. So I will be, that's the next one up, Laura. So I'll be reading that one very Blue shortly. Ocean strategy. I'm gonna have to. Yeah. Uh, so I, I originally got that down. from uh, uh, what's Ed's? Uh, Ed, are you in here today? This morning? Uh, what? What's Ed's YouTube channel? Uh, 
I was watching him one 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 evening and he was talking about I'm like that is an interesting concept and I added that book to the list. Blue ocean strategy, I got it written down. Uh but it's so we started out with profit first and then we did uh uh what was the next one? I'm gonna have to look at the list. I'm about to cheat. Um how many books have you guys done so far? Oh, never split the difference. What a great book that one was. If you if you, if you struggle like I do with, with negotiating, negotiating. I, I think that's one. There was so much information and never split the difference that I might have to revisit that one again. Probably in probably in a three or four months. <laughs> there you go. Is that the one with on the, like the? You're uh, on the third book, by the way. Is it a marine or like a? Uh, uh, he was counterintelligence. He was with the CIA. Okay. CIA. Yeah, FBI, 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 CIA. One of them. Look at that. Look at Todd. Look at them beautiful thumbs. Uh, so that's the nice thing I like about Audible. I do mine on Audible. Um, it's you. You can listen to them as many times as you want. So uh, uh, if you if you don't want, if you don't if you can't afford the books, folks, go to your library, get a library card. There you go. Most most states. Um, it was very simple. I got mine the other day. I was there for like six minutes, maybe five. They put my information in, gave me a card. And I was able to put that number in with my address. So I asked you what state you're in the Libby app. And so Blue Ocean Strategy, I'm listening to for free because it's available on the Libby app through my state. Oh, uh, because of the because of your library card. Library card. So you yeah. can wow. get a lot, of, a, lot, okay. a lot of areas have digital library cards. That's what I have. One for the Cleveland Public Library and then one for a lo the local county library. I need here. to go to the library. Oh, the wow. problem with ours is that all the books that are on the list – they're like three months out. So even though they're audiobooks, they still have a limit on how many licenses they have. Uh, oh. John, it's, it's not that, John. You know, you know, if somebody new is starting, you know, I'm just trying to give you a, an affordable way. You know, <clears throat> one of the things Profit First tells you, John, is you got to, you got to, I've got to kill one of my apps today. I keep thinking, remember, we get so many fees and we get feed to death. If, if you can do it cheaper, um, there's nothing wrong with, you know, advancing your knowledge at, at no cost but i mm -hmm. i do agree it, it is an investment and that's why i'm using audible because i really want to i want to keep these books and be able to read them again and be able to track what i've done and and mm -hmm. i got it for, it's only it's like 16 dollars a month but i for the first four months it's like five bucks i mean just imagine how much knowledge you're getting from that 16 dollars a month i mean and that's, and that's one thing rich dad for that he talked about uh he liked to take classes, a couple of classes a year, like seminars about how to do this, how to, he calls it um, development formulas. You know, he did one about how to, how to buy foreclosures. And he, he's like, that class has made me a couple million dollars. You know, he, you know, he, oh, yeah. he likes to, wow, I've never thought about that. Yeah. So the, the amount of knowledge you get, uh, the Dewey desk. <laughs> yeah. Dewey Eric, it's, 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 it's tough. So, uh, I don't think my children know anything about the Dewey Decimal System. The Dewey system. Decimal <laughs> System. <laughs> but boy, I, I could probably still, I could probably still, right, navigate it. But you'll be amazed. But, you know, we'll, we'll be in Nashville, and you'll be talking to somebody, and you know, I'm sure some of books and stuff will come up because I'm doing this. You know, you might meet somebody who goes, "Man, this book changed my life," and and get a get a suggestion that could that could alter your following business. Yeah. Um, man, I. John, John, you're 100 percent correct. So he's autism on mass. He, uh, Grumpy John's usually here, but uh, I don't know where in the world he is now. Uh, on a cruise somewhere, who knows what he's doing? But uh, I want to be yeah, never stop is. learning. Especially in this business, you can never stop learning because it changes so fast. You know, I like watching you guys because uh, you guys do whatnot, and you guys have gone full blast into whatnot. And yeah, it's it's a wild platform. It's like if YouTube and eBay had a baby. It's the craziest thing. I mean, you can sell something that's like you really like buying from the the person, but you still got to bring good stuff. Like I know that I think whatnot has a stigma of um, people offloading all their eBay junk inventory on whatnot, and I, you know, depending on who you are, I mean that is the case. But you know, I'm going, I'm trying to go gung ho on whatnot at least for this season and get that up and going so it's like smooth sailing the first year i spent um learning learning whatnot and then uh implement implementing um like a uh, a structure to what i'm like how i'm selling and how i'm shipping because it's a lot 
Once right. you have a whatnot show, you have like a hundred things that need to go out in two days. So like listing the item, selling the item, shipping the item, all that needs to have a system in place or else you're going to fail just like everything else. So the first year I spent doing that, learning the platform, implementing the systems. Now I'm like, um, wanting to grow in that platform. So that's yeah. kind of where I'm at right now. So like I said, I post a link to your whatnot. You're just a Nashville sure. flipper. On, on, yeah. The on Nashville whatnot. flippers, the Nashville flippers there, on whatnot. It's yeah, easy. There's, there's a Nash, there's a, the Nashville flipper, but it, make sure you put that S on there. Cause I don't know who the other guy is. Yeah. But, and uh, it's, but it's, it's, it's just different. If you, if you're more successful, if you, and people think, Oh, I don't have to list, but if you set up your auctions and list, you're doing some of the same work. Uh, but it's, I like the fact that it's a, you know, most things are going to sell. I mean, you'll have a few no sales, but it's very rare. Yeah. And I've, I, I watched you the other day and you had something no sell and then ran it about 30 minutes later and it sold. I mean, so. And it's weird because it's very, it's a very psychological platform as well. So if we see, for instance, we'll have an item that doesn't sell and Dustin's like, you know what, let's drop it down to five bucks. So I'll drop it down to five bucks and then it'll sell for more than the initial price when we didn't drop it down. It's kind of like the school, the cool strategy to where you think it's on sale, but it's not really on sale. <clears throat> and it tells you that, you know, the, this used to be 10 99 and now it's eight 99, but it's just like a fake price. But yeah, it's, um, it's a platform that we're going gung ho on. And, um, it's, this, a, it's a way this, to move merchandise. You move a yeah, lot of merchandise. Yeah. It's a f fast nickel instead of the slow dime kind of strategy for sure. But this will be the first garage sale season that I'll have that I'm going to be sourcing for whatnot. So I've been there like just a little over a year and this will be the first garage sale season. So n having that mentality to source for that particular platform i think it's going to really change the game instead of sourcing for ebay because so on ebay a totally different inventory that you sell on ebay and you sell on whatnot just correct completely yeah. different okay correct i mean you can sell what? the same but it's a different like for instance i would say that 60 percent of the inventory that i sell on ebay and every, every other platforms are coming through these amazon bin stores here in middle tennessee that i go to because it's low cost and you can find absolute gold mines. So last week I found uh, a four pack of uh, Apple air tags and I paid five bucks for it. And then an Apple generation two Apple pencil paid, you know, the same amount I could. And then, which I sold that on whatnot and I got it out immediately. And the yeah, I, thought you, sold, I, thought you really, I think it might've been shipping the pencil the other night when I called. Yeah. So the air tag sold on eBay value, the air eBay, the four pack of used uh, air tag sell for six seventy four dollars I sold the air tags for right at $70 on whatnot. And I got that money right then and there. And, um, and then, but anything, I tend to have a rule for myself. Anything that's like over $50 is going on eBay. But again, going back to the Amazon Ben stores, there's stuff in those Amazon Ben stores, let's say like unbranded headphones that on Amazon, they have great reviews. They're great headphones, but they're unbranded. They're a no name, like Chinese company that is never going to sell on eBay. But if you sell it on whatnot, the same headphones that you purchased for five bucks are probably going to sell for 24 to thirty dollars, which on eBay they were they're going to sit on your shelf for for eternity because it's not a Sony, it's not an Apple, so that kind of stuff is going is moving on whatnot all day long for me, and um, you know like gaming headphones, people are always looking for gaming yeah. headphones, so you can I can buy an unbranded gaming headphone for five bucks and sell it on whatnot for twenty four dollars all day long. I'm not making the best profit on it, but I'm selling 10 gaming Rocks headphones profit, the same day that i buy so here's, it. here's a thought uh so most people how do you put together ebay and whatnot so i'm, I'm gonna challenge people come up okay so if you if if ebay is punishing stores like we think for having a low a low turn you know low sell through and you want items that sell in 90 days like on amazon if you if you go to the nine day pop if you track the items based on how you list them for 90 days <laughs> list them on ebay and when they go up, come up for 90 days take them down and run them on walnut and be done with them you don't have you, you always have new merchandise coming through 
your eBay store, the people that look at eBay are not looking at, at whatnot. It, you know, think strategies on how to combine platforms in order to get the most, you know, if I'll, I'll, I'll try 90 days to get the most out of it, you know, maybe I don't want to pay eBay as much as their promoted listings. So I'll try the first 90 days to see what happens. And then if that doesn't help, I'm going to blow them out on whatnot and start That's over. Great. And them. It's, you know, there's all kinds yeah. of strategy if you just think through it. I know that uh, I'm in the process of going through my inventory and doing exactly what you're doing, Scott. Like I have like Paw Patrol figures that have been sitting in my inventory for years that no one's, you know, you have to look for that particular Paw Patrol figure that your kid might have like lost in the playground to even want to get it, right? So I'm just going to run it through whatnot. I've already made my money off of that buy, but it's just sitting on my shelf collecting dust. Let's just get 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 it gone. So that's, and it's, I'm using that strategy now um, yeah. to get my stuff out of here <laughs> to run it through our local auction. So we, so they're in Fayetteville, Tennessee, there's a local auction, the Simon auction that Harlan and I take stuff to. And I'm taking down stuff off of eBay. I'm uh, I'm taking stuff that e before I get it listed on eBay because I'm trying to ship smaller. And so it's a hey, Harlan's he's a, he's in the chat. And he says lower sell through. You know, we'll look at stuff and it's got it's got good value, but it's you know you most people they miss this part. You know, I find somebody yard sale and go, man, this thing's worth forty dollars on on eBay. And you look at it and go, but there's there's thirty of them listed. And only 12 sold. So you've got at least six months, eight months. So you're going to have to battle with promoted listings, with prices, or you can just run to the auction and, and be done with it. And, and so be we, done with it. I, I know that someone, be done. someone had made the argument. Um, why would you sell for, why would you sell something at a fraction of a cost on whatnot than list it on eBay for the eventual full month full value that it's worth on eBay. I mean, that's still not guaranteed, you know, like, cause I don't want to see it for a year in my inventory and just having that peace of mind of like looking at my inventory, it's nice and clean. Things are coming, moving in and out. It can be overwhelming in my opinion. So, I mean, I get it. I mean, if you have something that's like a thousand dollars, of course you're not going to sell it on whatnot. Cause right. It's, but it's too much work. People don't want to evaluate and, you know, they don't want to understand, you know, and look at, you know, what information they give you about sell through. You know, they don't want to think, you know, they, they, they see a price and, oh my God, this is what it's worth. They don't, they, and that's where they stop. You know, they, they've, and they, they don't realize that they, they probably got a filter by highest and they're looking at the highest as ever. So, you know, there's so much that goes through evaluating an item and, and, but videos, you know, we make videos and go, man, it's worth a it, it, it's worth this, and mm -hmm. people don't get and understand because we don't we don't tell them all the way through. Hey, uh, how many average viewers do you get on a show, and how long did it take you to build up that kind of viewership? Um, on a good day, it's probably uh fifty. Okay, but to be honest, Steve, I would rather have. 10 people on my show that are buying than 50 yeah. people that are just watching. Well, we used to do the uh, YouTube auctions, you know, before whatnot uh -huh. even existed. And, and I found the same thing. You could yeah. have 50 people in the show, but only five or 10 of them are buying. And that's. Yeah. For a good example, I know that, you know, I'm picking on uh, ADH Dave on this, but he recently had an auction and I just on whatnot, I looked at it. He had a hundred people watching. But his stuff was still selling for like five bucks. And I'm like, I don't want 100 people in my auction. They're just selling for five bucks. Like, okay, so, I get it. So is this silly? I can't watch Dave's videos, but he's hilarious on the podcast. Is that is that weird? No, I mean, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think it's weird at all. I don't think it's weird. We can only get so much of take so much of Dave. Autism on mass is Pokemon cards. I don't know what he means by that, but I'm a no, big we Pokemon do. guy. And I sell a dude. I'll sell. You were getting good um, money for. I watched you sell Pokemon cards by the pack. You were getting really good money for those. And Scott, those are just bulk. Like, like if I go to my local card store, they'll give me nine dollars for a thousand bulk cards. I can sell one hundred and fifty bulk cards on whatnot and get anywhere from fifteen to twenty dollars. Oh, it's absolutely. No I, wa I watched it, and they were run some more, run some more. Yeah. I mean, I watched it. 
And then it's I, I like what you did. You had one guy hit about multiple things, and you told him, "Dude, hey, I appreciate you so much. I'm gonna throw you a pack in there." I mean, yeah, it, it gives you a lot of Are flexibility you? and whatnot. I mean, if man, you could you could. If you use a personality and and really are a decent salesperson, man, and take care take care of the buyers, and inter always interact with the chat because they're they're there for you. You're not doing them a favor. But every time every time I ship a package, I always throw in like a thank you card, and I'm trying to throw in like gar like garbage pail kids cards. I just throw those in like as a little bonus or, you know, if they buy a lot, I'll throw in some more stuff in there because, you know, they want to be, you want them to be happy. Are your Why shows. Keep your, um, keep your records like eBay does and then send you a 1099 and all that stuff. For PayPal taxes. will send you a 1099. It all it goes comes through, through PayPal. PayPal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, question I had is do you, when you're running your shows, are you running it? A themed show or is it just you know like you're selling electronics pokemon cards and Bed Bath and it's Beyond well shit. that's a good thing about um right now i sell mainly in the consumer electronics category yeah. but i always sprinkle in different things that i know that my buyers may want it doesn't necessarily have to be electronics um so, vintage garbage pellet kits oh all oh, pikachus so eric did you i i got rid of all the other ones but i kept all the pikachus they had the holidays from the General Mills. <laughs> I ate a lot of cereal, know, by the way. <laughs> and there was one. There was one of these that was really good. Uh, not. I think uh, I still have one of those somewhere. Not that one. Oh yeah, that one, that one was the best card in the set. I never yeah. got the best card. Those are the cereal boxes. One, one yeah. Scott. Yeah. yeah, that was the hardest one to find. I got them sealed somewhere. I can't. I usually I, I do the big I do the big money cards. I sell those little bulk packs to get enough to I went to a card show this weekend here in at the foot at the fairgrounds. That's the only Pokemon I have right now. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, Rainbow Trainer. Um I, I what I did and I filmed a video, uh I needed some uh I took all the cards that I had and traded towards really big money cards. So that video is gonna be it's going to be really nice because I didn't spend like zero money. I actually walked out making money. So I'm trying to like, trying to get my brother in law, who used to do my YouTube auction shows with me, to come off mm -hmm. his baseball card collection because he's got some good shit in there. Some fire. And yeah, then I would then I would sell those on whatnot because I I've been looking at whatnot, man. There's a lot of card sellers on there. It yeah, seems to a lot. be it, it seems to be that they do really well too. But what not? I see a lot of people complain about price. I see a lot of people complain about you don't build up an audience. But I don't see people. I see people like you who are successful and just went for it. And everybody expects instant success. I'm like, you yeah. got to get over there and and prove yourself. And it's like anything else. You didn't start eBay and come out of the gates being some wonderful exactly. eBay seller. I um, spent a year just eating dirt, or the first couple months just eating dirt, losing money. You know, one of the things you do is I wish I did this earlier because I was like, man, I'm not going to lose any more money doing giveaways. Um, giveaways is the best way to gain followers because they click on the giveaway. You have to be a follower to enter the giveaway. And I'm like, I'm not doing giveaways because I don't want to do, lose any more money. I don't want to give, give things. I wish I would have did that way earlier. I'll do a shipping show on whatnot and there'll be 20 something people watching me ship. And then I'll do giveaways because people just want to. When you say a shipping show, what do you mean? Um, just like on shipping, Sunday, I did a shipping. Anything? I'm just shipping the items that I sold the previous day on whatnot. But um, so you're using it basically like a YouTube live. Exactly. Right? Okay. Exactly. No. But you can do giveaways during. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. And then at the end of the at the end of that, Steve, people were like, "Well, do you have an Xbox controller or do you have this?" And we're like, "Why well, as a matter of fact, I do." Upload it real quick. Sell an Xbox controller for thirty six bucks. Sell a PlayStation Four controller for, you know, thirty dollars. And that's stuff that you know, it's not a lot of items, but I made a hundred dollars real like the the fastest you can ever make because people want those items right then and there. Michigan girl, I followed you, but it doesn't look like you need any followers. Uh, <laughs> how much do you sell and whatnot? Michigan, you need to come out here and tell us about whatnot, Michigan girl. How many followers does I Michigan would like girl somebody? Have? Yeah. Uh, 40 something. 
forty. I can't. I can't read my phone. Forty six hundred. Oh wow! I would like to know if if you follow any sellers on whatnot that have like tutorials on how to actually run a show because. I'm one of those type of people who is, is going to watch 600 tutorials before I ever start. Okay. That's a great question, Steve. I'm actually working on several videos Good on idea. how to run a show. The first, my best Almost performing I video that, on, I didn't. yeah, my <laughs> best performing video on YouTube is my first uh, setting up for a whatnot auction, and um, it was setting up for a whatnot auction and uh, explaining the profit breakdown of the items that I sold on that right. whatnot auction and then and then i'm working on a video comparing the fees between whatnot and ebay which are basically identical but um especially now with the 10 plus 10 cents on items over ten dollars yeah. on ebay we got whatnot superstars in the chat mitch w 7500 uh yeah. it can uh folks sports it, to pin the, the one thing I can tell you is I've watched a lot of people through the years and I've, I've, I've tried to help people, but the ones that if you don't try, so, if you're scared to try something new, if you're scared, I mean, if you, if you, if you don't have a plan to think something through, I mean, every, there's going to be successes everywhere. And it's what kind of mindset do you have? Are you prepared to take advantage of it? Are you prepared to have enough high level thinking in your business to take advantage of a new opportunity, a platform or, or are you just going to sit back and complain as it as it walks by you? Uh, congratulations, yeah. Mitch and Michigan girl! Congratulations! Uh, I'm glad you guys are are doing well over there. Yeah, uh, I'm going to follow you guys for sure. I just took a picture of the of the name, so I'm excited to see how you yeah, guys run your whatnot auctions. Well, yeah, and then you can do all, stuff all like right. uh, raid trains, to where the good thing about whatnot when you finish a show, you can send everybody that's watching your show to another show. And so, like for instance, on Thursday we've been doing garage sale raid trains to where um i'll have other friends and we'll start i'll start this at this time for an hour when i'm finished i'll send them to this show and then they send them to that show mm. and so it's like it could be like an all day to, thing i used to do a, a paranormal type shows podcasts and things like that and i had buddies that did the same thing we used to do raid this is back in the yeah. 2010s and 11s we used to do that stuff and it's good to know that you could actually use it as a marketing tool for your friends and buddies and then they in turn do that for you which is pretty cool and then the cool thing unlike youtube and i was talking about this yesterday is that people can tip you if they like you and you keep a hundred percent oh god of the i'll never get any you'll be surprised steve <laughs> you'll get a hundred percent of the money <laughs> whatnot doesn't take the, a cut of it at all i've been putting a lot of thought into starting whatnot my biggest fear though was you know I have no followers. I got 22 followers on whatnot. I've never done it. It doesn't show. matter. I've seen a great example, Jen Multiverse on YouTube. She doesn't have a big YouTube Instagram presence. She has the most cult-like following on whatnot that I've ever seen in my life. It's insane. She'll really, just turn the camera on and just talk, and then she'll sell stuff, but she is like a superstar. I'm having her on my podcast actually tonight, which will come out tomorrow and it's it's insane how uh, somebody that's yeah. not a youtube person can be such a big whatnot person the biggest fear i have is i'll do a show and nobody shows up <laughs> you know that's the, then, that's the fear and then that will probably be a, the case the first couple shows and you just gotta work th i think the first show we had there was like seven people in there if that you know but, but like thumbnails are important you know, setting up your show and then just scheduling out Actually shows in the future. The I, I hate shows that they go, well, I'll show a whole table. What do y'all want me to run? I hate, I yeah. hate, and they've done no work. They've done no work to set up the show. Uh, you know, they're just turn on the camera and I'm like, yeah, I, I don't stay on those very long. And you can do that, but you have to be like super established right. to be able to do that. Like everything that I have in my auctions, everything is preloaded in the auction tab. It's all listed. So if you look through the auction tab, you're going to see like, okay, I'm going to want that. Ray, can you run this? So, or I'll just start grabbing stuff and start running it. All right. I found my first whatnot giveaway. Thank you. What did that say? <laughs> oh, that's a big my giveaway. First... <laughs> it's a joke. Yeah. 
Uh, what did the question say? If you run giveaways, why not? We'll send people your way your way the... to the algorithm. That is true. It's weird. It is true. All right. Well, it's good to know because there's people like me out there who really want to explore that platform, but are I'm terrified to do it. So you don't even you know, have to show it, your face if you don't want to, Steve. There's well, no, people... no, no. You know, I've had a YouTube yeah. channel. That doesn't bother me, but it's the fear of nobody showing up. That's all. But That's the biggest fear. <laughs> it's it's a, at some point. And what we all deal with it in life is is and it's the how many times you got to be told you know, it's the it's it's the bold it's the it's the ones that are, are you got to the fear is you got to be able to overcome that fear no matter what it is in life. Um, okay, so some some things fear is good. You know, I'm taking a shower. I'm fearful of using the ha- the the hair dryer in the shower. Okay, that's a good one. Or a, a hot it oven, hot stove. You fear touching it because you'll burn yourself. But the rest of the stuff is all of us in our head. Um, it's in my head. I know that. If you've if you've got a good social merchandise or or I've got a good plan, you only know how good it is and whether you'll be successful is if you try it or not. Um, Mitch says the hardest part is turning on the camera, and he's got look at all the subs these folks have got. And hard, hard, folks, I still I haven't made a video in a while. I've done more lives than anything else, but even when I upload videos and shorts and whatever. I still have a little average. I'm like, well, does anybody care? I mean, well, they yeah. might even watch this stupid Trust video. Me. I still have that same thought, but I yeah. hit the button anyway. I, I promised everybody a video last week and I still haven't done it. So it, it's because we're, I promise it the, will happen. I'm the same way. Like, man, I need to put more videos out and I have these grand ideas to do videos and I'll record for videos and I'll never edit them because I'm focusing on my reselling business and yeah. not necessarily content creation. You know what I mean? And I feel like it's one or the other, like super, you know, we know people that are like super invested in their, your, their social media presence and their YouTube and that's okay. And, but I make more money on reselling than I am doing any of this. And that's really what I'm going to focus on. You know what I mean? Yep. Ron, do you not read the chat at all? It's terrible, man. <laughs> Morning, y'all. His uh, what's whatnot your handle is the exact same as what's under his the, name there. Yeah, the, the Nashville, Nashville Flippers Ron. is the so, one handle. So Ron is here. Ron, it reminds me if uh, just continue uh, to lift Ron up. Uh, he's his health has gotten gotten better. I talked to Ron yesterday. It was good. Uh, I'm out riding around. It was good to talk to Ron for a few minutes. And uh, Sue is having her first radiation today. So if you if everybody remembers Sue, uh, she's got radiation and, and chemo stuff to go. Um, Ron just got up, and Ron's a good story. One of these days, I'll get Ron to turn his camera on because Ron he is he's run his his eBay store where he's donated the, the money to people who are also getting transplants who need who, who need help for oh, wow. whatever, whatever they need help for. And uh, he's made a huge change in what he sells, and uh, it's amazing. Someone who's a long time reseller, a long time eBayer, when you change your platform, he's like, dude, this is. I, I actually enjoy it again, and that, that was really good to hear yesterday, Rod. I'm I'm glad that uh, you found a segment that is that is something that you like to do again. So, folks, there's you never know if you like what not. If you know, you can find stuff. There's 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 inventory out there. It's amazing. Watch some shows and see what people are selling. It's it's a it's damn near anything sells. I mean, there's get the right category. Mm-hmm. And you might and start it, buying different when you start doing a different uh, it, platform like that. Steve, it, mm-hmm. it changes, and like like Ray's going to start going to start doing some of his yard sale stuff. Dude, yeah. Harlan and I feed an auction yard sale stuff. It is it is amazing what's out there and the stuff that we buy. That so Tracy is usually in here. Trace uh, uh, T flips, and Tracy we'll we'll run into Tracy damn there every Saturday and Tracy I'm gonna, he goes well God, Tracy have you been up there he goes yeah nothing there no I wouldn't even worry with it we'll go over there and buy all kinds of stuff because he's just doing straight eBay and we'll and we send stuff to the auction now maybe it's big stuff maybe it's whatever stuff that doesn't have enough value but you know if you only got a few dollars in it it, it at the auction it's worth it yeah and so it's, oh yeah. I found I just started recently selling local on Facebook Marketplace just to move some stuff, and mm-hmm. you know, you're not getting top dollar that way, not in my area. However, you can still buy stuff and make a profit doing that, and mm-hmm. it's all porch pickup stuff, so I don't even have to talk to people if I don't want to. 
so I, th- I think you hit on a thing right there, Steve, that most people are reselling think that they de- that they deserve top dollar. And it's nah, it is it's sort of microwave for ten bucks. So if you're selling if you're selling items like antiques and you're at, at where you're only selling one or two or whatever and your that value of that item is there's but the name of the game is how many times can you flip the dollar? You know, how many the, the churn of, of money and, and cash flow through your business is how you're successful at reselling. It is it is it is not um, you know, oh, how how many how, pop rocks, John's in the chat. How many pop rocks would you have sold, John, if you waited and so and, and waited and sold the highest? Or you come on, John's pop rock listens. He would chase you to the bottom, run you off, and then go back to selling because it was all mm-hmm. about how many he sold. It wasn't about it is it, it is about how many times can you turn the dollar, how fast can you flip it? You know, building cash flow. It is. Waiting, the easiest way to kill your business is to, I have to have top dollar for everything. It'll kill it. Also know your market. You know, here, if I'm selling locally, I know that my market is pretty depressed. You know, there's, mm. there's not a lot of people with a lot of money. So, yeah. if I, for example, I sold a microwave. It was given to me for free. I started it out high, high in my opinion, $25. But eventually I got it down to, I think it was 15 I sold it for 10 It was free. You know, it's free ten dollars for me, and I let you can leave it out on the porch and tell them where to put the money, and that's all you got to do. I mean, it was Turn no extra effort. Yeah, so John no said, "Thumbs up for coffee in Vegas is twelve bucks." So I stopped yesterday at a gas station in somewhere, George. I don't know where I was, and uh, outside of Dalton, I think. And you know how much a freaking candy bar is in a convenience store, bro? They're expensive. Mm-hmm. Two dollars so and thirty cents, right and this now. is the regular one. If you want the king size, it was three thirty nine. I'm like, because I, I stopped and I had some crackers in the seat. I'm like, yeah, I got to use the bathroom. I'm gonna get another drink. I don't want crackers. I got my ass in the car and ate crackers because I'm not paying <laughs> two dollars and twenty nine or thirty nine cents for a. Can- okay, so I stopped at a grocery store later on uh, in the middle of nowhere, and they were like a dollar and twenty nine cents. I'm like, that's insane that a candy bar is. Okay, so get this. So I'm sitting there and I, I'm on the phone with Joni. I'm telling her candy bars. I'm bitching about it, and uh, <laughs> I sold a six dollar item for ninety dollars. And I started laughing. I'm like, the, the irony of the fact that I'm yeah. bitching about a dollar on a candy bar, and uh, I just sold an item for fifteen times <laughs> price. <laughs> I went into a I went into a food line when last time I was in North Carolina to get a soda pop, twenty ounce. Yeah, I walked out without the soda pop. It was too damned expensive. Yeah. Look, yeah. I mean, the price on Little Debbie cakes is they're like three dollars. They're still cheap. Yeah. No, yeah. look look at the little next time you go to a convenience store, check out the price on Little Debbie cakes. Oh, at a convenience up. store, yes, I get yeah. it. But I mean I'm talking Walmart. I'm in Walmart yeah. every single day because Yeah, I like the, the the old fifty nine cent honey buns were like two for three dollars. Yeah. I'm like, oh my so, And they're smaller. Think, they're in there smaller, also. So you got to be cheap. So, yeah. so what have I done? Uh, so I didn't. I did it when I went on the two day trip, but I didn't do it yesterday. But I will not leave the house without it again. Four dollars, you can get. You can get six of these at Walmart for four dollars. I've been carrying the Yeti cooler with me on every trip now because. Um, Just fill it up. Drinks are convenience store. Drinks are anywhere from two thirty nine to two eighty nine, depending on where you buy them. The the wife and I decided a long time ago. And when we were out sourcing, now and now when we're out doing our deliveries, we're not buying lunch. We'll pack our lunch, and oh, it works wow. good for. Oh yeah, we don't we don't go to restaurants at all ever, and it's because it's so doggone expensive. You're spending how much of your paycheck a, a week are you spending on eating? Man, I'm cheap. I, I go into Wendy's and get a five dollar bag because it's five dollars. Well, I, 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 I eat I eat a couple sandwiches <laughs> and and some orange oranges and that's that's my lunch every day and that's fine and i take you can go to walmart and get them 89 cent waters flavored waters but mm-hmm. uh, i don't know what the brand name is but it's walmart brand and that's it that's what i that's what i have every day and it's fine and you know i'm saving a ton of money ton of I money did. so we're i guess we're about halfway through or a little halfway through the show just a reminder Ray is on here to tell you about the the Nashville Flippers meetup April 26th to the 28th. Uh, 
in Nash Vegas. We are going to have a good time. Uh, confirmed at least 30 people already going to be there. Confirmed. Confirmed. Oh, I was going to uh, say, say something about the hotel. So when I was looking to book the hotel, you know, like I think it was like I did. I looked to see what the rate was. It was like a 130 bucks. <clears throat> but then I called the hotel to see if maybe we can get like a little bit of a cheaper rate if we you know because so many people are coming they quoted me 155 dollars a room yeah which is cheaper than just going and booking the regular room yeah uh i think it's gone up i got 152 but i think it's gone up (laughs) it's probably after i called 140 maybe it's 145 it was 340 something with tax so you're uh, saying it was more to to book the room as a group than it was correct individually yeah that's Isn't that crazy. weird yeah. yeah they're lying to you is what it is oh yeah, yeah. Well, we got a bunch sure. of people coming yeah we'll give you a special rate on exactly it. so if you st- we're, st- we're staying at holiday and express so you wake up a better reseller because you wake up with different skills at the holiday and express according to their right. commercial i'm so, not a reseller but i stayed at a holiday and, uh, express last y'all get y'all get to meet harlan's new there screen he is. there you go <laughs> there he is uh, I've met her. Uh, she passes all the tests, so she, she's approved. Yep, we're coming. The, I got my and so that's it. Harlan's not. Have, have you have you hit the book the link in the the Facebook group that says I'm definitely coming? Yeah. I'll say I'm gonna see if you're part of the train. Oh, I, I haven't, I haven't I, hit that. I I just put the link back in the side chat there. So for anybody who's looking, that's the group. But I mean, there's there's no. I mean, this is on the cheap, folks. This is. The one thing that I can tell you about these, the most important thing about these meetups is I don't learn anything from the people. It's nice that they, 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 they do some teaching and some people, folks, I've been reselling. I mean, I can learn from whatnot and a few other things, but you learn the most by just talking to people. I can't tell you, you ha- come have a good time and spend some time with resellers. And I can't, you can't imagine what you will learn. You'll leave fired up. You'll, I mean, you, you leave, with a lot of energy because you have you get fired up whenever you, you think, man, I'm not crazy. This is awesome. Yeah, Let's more go. about motivation. There's more about motivation like than me. anything. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. I mean, I just just talking to you today, I'm motivated for whatnot. You know, it's, come on, it's, Steve. No, come on. No, whether I'll do it or not is a whole different story. When you get ready to do it, let me right know, now, and I, we can put you on a raid train. So when we so when somebody's finished, your show starts, and we can just send those people that your way. I'm gonna have a show it's, with just big girl panties. Big girl. <laughs> hey, well, I'm I sure got it. I've been going. I've been going through all my inventory here, right? And I'm thinking, man, this would be good on whatnot. This would be good on whatnot because it's smaller stuff, paper, ephemera, that kind of thing, uh, sports cards. How and many like, three? Yeah. How many three X uh, thigh slimmers can I sell to the big girl? Shout out, good there, big girl. Zero. <laughs> Man, some California big girl hit me with a with an offer of four dollars yesterday. I'm like, well, she lives in California, so that means all you her. You better eat another sandwich and think about what you We're just did. We're in a recession, like, Scott. She needs oh, to go. Damn. She needs to eat another sandwich and think about the slimming that she's going to get. Four dollars is all the money that California let her keep. That's yeah, her watch. exactly. If you hit you too many times, she'll knock you down. You cannot ship up the four dollars, folks. <laughs> exactly. I'll work on. I'll, I'll. I'll tell you what, guys. I'll work on putting something together, and then we'll we'll figure out a whatnot show. But it's not going to be today, and it's not going to be next week. It's going to be a while. But I'll do it. We'll be on there. I promise. We'll be on there. Twenty twenty six. It'll be. Yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got. Back- well, you know, I work eight hours a day, and then I come home. And I'm like, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> so, if so you can work eight motivation. hours a day, then you list for eight hours a day, and you have a full sixteen-hour day. Sometimes you know, you I've, I've motivated myself enough to come home from work and then start working on. Like I've been going through all my sports cards re- recently, um, uh, and pulling out the ones I think I can list on eBay. And, but you know what? It's easier just to to do a whatnot show with those. <laughs> so exactly. that's probably what I'll end up doing. So I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret and and. You know, success and and getting what you want is is you, you gotta. Sometimes you gotta sacrifice. I've missed the last two wing nights. What the hell? What? Uh, just what it, it? 
Tuesday's a good day for me to go source because I ship them on Mondays and I auction on Mondays and I talk to you guys on Wednesdays, record a podcast on Thursdays. I go live on Friday nights. You know, you know, Tuesdays are a good day for me if I'm going to do a one day trip. And, and by noon, I had already found two items on my bucket list of finding stuff that I had not found. And they were a lot of money. And I'm like, I called Harlan. I'm like, you never believe what I just found. He goes, okay, your absence is excused. You keep looking for shit. <laughs> I, I actually thought this week, it's, I'm, I'm going to miss yard sale season again. I missed it last year because I had to work. But if I can take Wednesday off. I ain't that crazy. The, where's the old man? Yard sale season. What? It, yeah, I know. It sucked. Oh, it was so hard passing yard sales last year and not being able to stop, right? Mm -hmm. But if I take Wednesdays off and miss this show, I can do yard sale season, but then I miss. You have the yard show. sales that, on that Wednesday, hurt. Steve? No, no, no. I take Wednesday. I take Wednesdays off currently to do this show. It's the only reason I take oh. the day off. It's to do this show in the you morning. You take the whole then, day off to do a two-hour show? Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, because I got to drive quite a ways to get to where I work. You know, so. No, I but just, you could be doing eBay day. after this. Well, yeah, I'll do eBay or something in the afternoon. I cram everything into one day, is what I do. But if I take this day. <clears throat> And work and take Fridays or Saturdays off, then I can go to yard sale. Right? And it's been, I've been racking my brain on whether I should do that or not because I love doing yeah. the show. Okay. But I don't yeah. want It might be an hour, John. You never know. I get that the, the, the cursor will start moving towards the red button over there. And I, right in the mid sentence, it'll just go click, <laughs> click. That's funny. Could be, it could be any, any second now. He's, he's going to give you the big, now. he's going to give you the big fine for the day. The big fine for the day is. In show. <laughs> Oops. Sometimes you got to do it like that because people would just be talking, you know? <laughs> but it's, it's kind of funny. You know, but, it, but, it, but Ray talked about, and you know, making videos is hard. You know, I struggle with, you know, I'm back into a lot of retail arbitrage. You know, you kill your own, you kill your own market if you start telling people where, you know, you, you can teach do them you too sell much. on Amazon too, Scott. Uh, that's number. That's my main channel. <laughs> that's your main thing, right? I thought so. Yeah. Yeah, I've got. So I've yeah, got those 22. those those places should be close to your heart. You can't you can't give away. I got twenty two to ship from Amazon just from yesterday. I ship. I got up and shipped nineteen before I left, and then dropped them off and left town. I've got another twenty one, twenty two, whatever it is, and I got two on eBay to ship. <laughs> crazy it's but it's yes leg you can come with me to yard sales how is it that how is Laggy. it that, that you own the cable company and can't get any service what the hell <laughs> i don't own the cable company no i was i've got too many i got 33 tabs open and i lost you <laughs> yeah that's 30 that's 32 too many I'm, I'm North Georgia picker. I might have accidentally been in a couple of walking rings yesterday, maybe. Ah, there, there you go. Are. There's your hint. It's Something at Walgreens. Me. It's hard for me to pass a Walgreens. I mean, just because I've been it's it's been ten years of Walgreens that I've always gone to Walgreens, so it's I don't pass them very much. Yeah. Even if it's just to use the bathroom, because you know, ninety nine percent of the time the bathrooms are cleaner than most places. So decent. Except for Bucky's. Raid, raid aids are usually pretty good too. Except except for Bucky's. Uh no, those are goaded. Those bathrooms are goaded for sure. The, it's the best bathroom in the world is a Bucky's bathroom. But if you're if you're coming from almost anywhere, uh so they're building a Bucky's in Kentucky. There's one on uh on I forty to the to the east of Nashville. I know Nat, I know I think Memphis is getting one too. And if you come up from the south here when Coming does Ohio get one? Five Bucky's. It's awesome. Do you see that uh, picture of the big guy with a beard coming out of a Bucky's restroom? And uh, he's got on a Bucky shirt, and the caption reads, "I took a big ass shit in Bucky's restroom." I've seen. I've seen that. Todd. I have seen that. <laughs> hey, Kevin, I'd I'd take you up on that, man. Kevin says I could take a week off and go yard sale with him. Yeah. I love I love yard sale with Kevin, man. I learned so much. Or yeah, I went I went thrifting with Kevin when the last time I was in Nashville. And my God, Harlan, I are we having yard so sales this weekend, Harlan? I know there's a church sale. 
Because yeah, it looks like guard. rain Friday, but Saturday looks pretty clear. I know there's one off of Garth. Wayne and Garth. Oh, is that I miss being a full time. Is that the Roman Trail fundraiser on Garth? Yeah, I think so. If any of y'all live near Food Lions, check your clearance section. They've got their red lice remover kits on, on clearance. Why do we need lice remover kits? Right. Because I sold two market? for seventeen fifty plus shipping. What what are they on clearance at? at I thought you were about to tell us you had lice. No, no, no. I mean how much? Oh, uh, they were three fifty. <laughs> okay. That ain't too bad of a come up. <clears throat> no. Um, f- food line. We don't even know what those are up here. That's a that's a that's a grocery <laughs> store. A well, I know what it is. I know what it is. A supermarket. So Tom, are you, you coming? In, are you coming to Nashville so you, and we can talk the hand in the coming so y'all can actually meet in person? What the hell? You wouldn't Just know the Adams family he'd, hand. He'd have to hold his hand out like this the whole time so everybody'd know who he was. When is it? The twenty sixth to the twenty eighth of April. Yeah, I'll put the I'll put the um, uh, link in yeah. the chat again. Put the link in the chat. I'm gonna have to jump off here, Scott. But um, yeah, for everyone that is wondering, um, Nashville meetup, April twenty sixth to the twenty eighth. Check out the Facebook group. It's completely free, though the itinerary will be on the Facebook group. I did a little video there, too. You can come before. You can come after. I'm looking forward to meeting everybody. It's going to be a fun time. I said, and if you want, you want to talk one, one-on-one whatnot in person, I'm sure there's going to be more than one whatnot seller. For sure. For uh, sure. Ray will not talk to you, but Dustin will, so there you go exactly that's exactly right so thank you all so much for having me uh scott thank you all and hey, right, uh, i'll talk to you it, later thanks for, coming on. We'll see you, buddy. Thanks, for the, see thanks for the little bit of motivation man for sure i'll talk to you later steve yep. see you, Ray. i'm telling you there's so much opportunity out there there's no right or no wrong you, how do you get what do you do if you if you're uh if, if you're stuck it's been since last april people have been bitching about sales on ebay how many of those people have t- since last April could have taken April till now to have built up their whatnot business and replaced eBay altogether? But it's so much easier to bitch and moan, uh, bitch and moan, and 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 whatever, whatever instead of doing something about your issue. It's uh, I'm telling you, it, I mean that's you're eight, nine months, ten months. You could have easily replaced. You could be the you could be like Mich- Michigan girl. You could be the the, the queen of whatnot. You could have you could have the same amount of followers. You could have put in the effort. Oh, but beard, I don't get any money for stuff on whatnot. You're not getting any money on eBay. What are you waiting for? Yeah, if you're <laughs> not think, selling, you're not getting. I think the problem with whatnot is that a lot of people who try it give up after the first <laughs> two shows or whatever because they didn't get the results they were looking for. Well, they also realize it's it's really work. I mean, it looks fun that they know to sell a bunch of items, but then the first thing you got to realize. I like that uh, that Ray. I, I caught them the other day. They were actually live d- doing shipping. Um, and there was two or three of them just steadily going at it. If you sell a hundred items, be prepared to ship a hundred items. Have a plan and go. I would and start make- out slow, of course, on whatnot. You know, maybe hey, still thirty. Still 30. Yeah. Or plan to stay up all freaking night, or you know, getting it, it, it all shipped together. Anything worth doing is going. There's going to be sacrifice involved. Because there's some of these. Because when I was at, at FlipCon, there were some people there that they only did one whatnot a week, <laughs> and they made their you know their salary for the week. Ray's whatnot is the Nashville Flippers, and his, Ray's YouTube his, is the Nashville Flippers. Yeah, they're the Nashville Flippers everywhere. Ray's Facebook is probably the Nashville Flippers, and Ray's yeah, yeah. So they were they were like S. they were selling one night and shipping the next day, and then right. they were done till the then they were just getting more merch together for the next show. But it's, I mean, you've 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 gotten exactly what you wanted. You sold a hundred items. Have a plan to, to ship the hundred items. You know, how long does it take you to sell hundred items on eBay? Yeah, but beard, I only got sixty percent. 60% is better than nothing. You just sold five on eBay, four, seven if it's a great day. Oh, but 
then I'd have to get boxes and then I have to do this. Go to work. Go clock in and go to work. <laughs> wow, you gotta you, you gotta have some ambition, some drive, some desire. I'm telling you right now, find some motivation. If I could do what Mitch does, now Mitch has a huge following, but if I could do that, 150, 200 items a week, I could quit doing uh, grocery delivery. For sure. I mean, but, but look, he, I'm, I would do one show a week, but I'm sure, let me guess, Mitch, it's the same time every week. You do, you, you do giveaways, uh, you set shows up, you ship immediately. I bet you've got great feedback. I mean, you've, and you've sold 150 to 200 items. Whatnot is is now becoming a more of a season platform. I think back in the beginning when we, I know you tried a, a couple shows over there, and, but it's a whole different, I'm sure, ball game nowadays than it was back then. And so, it's worth a second look if you haven't done it. I think he he quit being a financial advisor for whatnot. So there's money on whatnot, folks. There's acts. There, I mean, there's there's money. If make yourself an expert, how do you how do you win it? What not? Study it for the next two or three weeks, and get up and get about figuring out where to what you're going to sell and and start. The hardest thing to do is have the first auction. Once you, I've I've had three or four. Once you have the first one, it's 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 a no brainer. Just go. It's uh. I mean, I, I may try a few here or there, but you know, you're not gonna if you're just gonna try a few here or there. You've got to be consistent. One thing I can tell you about whatnot is you got to be consistent. They're looking if you want to build an audience, they want they want to see you the same time. If it's gonna be one show a week, every Wednesday at 8 a.m., whatever. The biggest issue with me would be I'd have to keep finding inventory to be able to sell. I might have enough inventory for two shows. That's it. Consistency is what you got when you're in sales, you got to be consistent. It don't matter whether you're selling cars, you're whether you're selling, you know crap on ebay you got to be consistent listing it. so it don't matter what platform you're on you got to be consistent on it yeah i made 40 bucks on ebay last week because i'm not consistent i haven't listed in forever you know no, i've list don't get me wrong i have listed but here and there one thing on a wednesday i might do five things but last week it was just a slow sales week now, i made 300 dollars a, a couple of weeks ago it's so if, if you're halfway decent at eBay, just think what what is major success? You source well, you find good items, you make good listings, uh, you're consistent with your listings, you have a plan about doing it every day. All those same skills translate to a platform like whatnot. It's just a slightly different tweak. You'd be amazed. Oh my god, I gotta turn the camera on. Folks, I'm never gonna win. I'm never gonna be GQ man of the year. Sorry about that. I it, it we all have flaws. Just get over yourself and and get about it. Turn the camera on and go. It doesn't. <laughs> all those excuses, all that stuff in your head, it it just stops you. you. You've got to learn to get out of your own way. Do what do what you know is great. Oh Lord, what up, Crash? What's well, cracking, Dave? Uh, it's uh. So this year, man, inventory he owns a sports car shop has an abundance of inventory. It's take advantage of what you got. That's a, that's another great lesson. Take advantage of what's available to you. So you said you GQ know, Man of the Year, and Dave shows up. Nice. <laughs> that's the first time I've seen Dave without a bong in his hand on my show in a long time. I saw, oh. I, saw it. I saw I saw the older version of Dave at Walmart the other day. This dude looked exactly like you, except he was like 90. He had the same beard, same glass, <laughs> the same hair. I'm like, oh, that's what Dave's going to look like when he gets older. I did not recognize Dave without the bomb. I'll do an FBA. Or FBD, I should say. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing with Amazon. What makes you successful on Amazon? It's been the same way since uh, and, and Amazon rewards you for Feed the beast. How, many, how long has that been a thing since I started? Feed, feed Amazon. Amazon stuff will sell. Feed Amazon good inventory. It blows it out. It's it's same thing. With, same thing. With, I mean, we act like it's still reselling, folks. It's just a little bit different. We act like it's so completely different. Oh my god! Because they threw a little social media in there. You actually, God forbid, somebody. You actually have to show somebody you're actually a pretty nice person. You know, I 
most people are generally nice people. Most people are generally likable. If you're not generally likable, I suggest you stay away from whatnot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Other than that. that. I feel that would be a negative. I think Harlan answers to the owner of the company, and he's in his 80s. That guy doesn't look like he's in his 80s. Todd, are you going to Nashville? Uh, no, I'm every nickel we have is going to, uh, our upcoming trip to <clears throat> Netherlands, Germany, France, Switzerland. We're taking a biking cruise. So I, I got to save up. But it's, it's, that's the one frustrating thing was with, with watching, you know, making videos about eBay is. I get so tired of the eBay whiners. I get tired of, you know, they get, they've got one main excuse is they have zero solutions. They've, they've, they've thought nothing through it. You know, their answer is to get in the comments and just, God forbid you tell them an answer and they go, you suck. You're the worst ever. I'm like, listen here, dumbass. <laughs> you want to know the people asking for advice and then when you give them advice, well, no, that's not the advice I wanted. Uh, oh, you know, it's like Todd. Todd is a consistent oh. lister. He's a cons consistent seller. He makes good money each week. Even when everybody else is having bad weeks, he's sell He's making money. Bridget's the same way. Bridget and Chris are the same way. They're consistent listers. They're consistent sellers. And you don't hear them bitching. Maybe things are a little slow, but they're still making money. So if you want, you know, maybe Todd doesn't make as, make as much money as you would like to make. Well, you got to take what he's doing and you got to multiply it times five hey, times. Hey, Mitch, uh, he's, he's, he's just not with us. Uh, autism unmasking in the chat. That is, that's uh, Grumpy John, RV John. Uh, Glad you're back, uh, Mitch. But it's yeah, I only sold four hundred on eBay yesterday. So yeah, I mean things are kind of slow. And for no, that's, so that's real good for me. fifty on eBay yesterday, maybe. But you and, do that just on a daily basis, just about Todd. So you know that's some pretty good coin at the end of the week. You know to make fifty thousand dollars a year, if maybe that's your goal. I, uh, angry grandma, we should get the queen to listen on here and let her berate these people who say they can't list. How many she list today? Oh, shit. Bridget gets in a, in a stream and she'll list a damn hundred in a day. Todd and her are like, y'all would have to have us on IV drips in the, in the coma ward at the, at the, at the hospital a hundred. But she does. She just gets in a, in a loop and she goes. <laughs> Mitch, Mitch, you've done, look what you did now, Mitch. See what you did? <laughs> <I'm joined. laughs> that's a big RV you got there. That's what he was doing. He was he was he was getting ready to play the piano. That's what it was. Oh Jesus! <laughs> you still in Vegas, John? Uh, you've got no you've got no uh, microphone. What? Got you the camera and everything. What the hell? Mm -hmm. No voice. No voice. Try to use that damn laptop that again. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be awesome right here. All right, here's what John sounds like. Are y'all ready? Wah, 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 wah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 